I was recently consolidating my thoughts regarding a ritualistic magic system with symbolic elements. In other words, magic gets its power from symbolism, and magicians would engineer the environment to maximize the spell's effectiveness. It's a bit like cooking where a spell is a recipe, and without certain ingredients in the right amounts and right environment, it will either fail or be ineffective. Necromancy is associated with darkness, certain frequencies of sound, circles, and an absence of color. To maximize the power of the minion and the success of the ritual, the necromancer would reanimate corpses in a darkened circular chamber while acolytes chime the gentle bells of death, and a gentle wind causes the harmonic rattling of bone chimes. Their robes would be certain to feature circles in some form, as well as be devoid of color. Let's take a fireball. In my setting, fire is associated with air, abundant electromagnetic and thermal radiation, bright colors of a reddish hue, shades of dark gray and black, and curves. Therefore, the optimal environment for casting a fireball would be on a bright summer day, while wearing red robes with some gray and black on them. Meanwhile, suboptimal conditions for casting a fireball would be on a rainy winter night while wearing angular blue robes. If we want to completely ruin the fireball, then we try casting it underwater. There is a purposeful mixing of science and symbolism here, because I do like some science in my magic. So things that are good for fire scientifically are also good for it magically. The more suitable the environment is, the higher the chances of success and the more powerful the spell will be. A good mage can overcome a bad environment through their expertise, but a pyromancer's fireball will never be as potent in winter as it will be during summer. But there is much more that can influence magic, especially the cosmos. Depending on when you are born, you will have an inherent bonus or handicap when it comes to certain types of magic. The circumstances of birth can make or break a mage. When and where you are born, to whom, and in what environment, all of these things can herald an archmage. Magical societies put great stock in astrology and the conditions surrounding the birth, sometimes outright forbidding procreation during certain times of the year, to prevent the accidental birth of someone they deem heretical. For example, the church do all they can to prevent those predisposed to the occult from being born. But when the Earth aligns perfectly with the unholy sixth planet, an event that only occurs once every 666 years, it is guaranteed that multiple children of darkness shall be birthed. These are destined to become master necromancers that seek only the destruction of all life. This is a hard magic system, meaning that many aspects of it are clearly defined. You can predict and calculate how effective a spell will be given the following factors. The first consideration is the practitioner. An exceptionally powerful mage can force certain kinds of magic to work under almost any circumstances. It would be a fool who tries a very powerful and complicated spell under the wrong conditions though because the consequences of the spell backfiring are so dire. The second consideration is the environment. Things like the weather, time of day, month, year, etc. These things can either wildly empower a spell or snuff it out completely. The final and often underestimated consideration is geometry and color. A mage on the move can wear a tie with the right shapes and symbolism to empower their magic. But for exceedingly complicated magic, a mage might spend years specially crafting a ritual chamber to maximize this attribute as much as possible. This is why mages live in strange places like tall spindly towers, or deep underground, and as far from the light as possible. Failed spells can be quite interesting in the system, and be the cause for a lot of the horrors present in the world. The more powerful the ritual, the more horrifically it can backfire. In simple cases for simple spells, like a fireball, it will fail in the most catastrophic manner by just blowing up in the wizard's face. More commonly, the spell will fail to properly materialize and fizzle out or be very weak and ineffective. But if you take something like a Ritual of Resurrection to revive a fallen comrade and it fails, the results may be more catastrophic. Best case, the spell is a costly blunder and the comrade stays dead. Worst case, the comrade returns as some kind of magical horror or revives, but with a different soul. An evil soul, perhaps. Many of the awful things of the world can be linked back to the failed rituals of ambitious mages. Vampirism, lycanthropy, and many of the unsavory species like the naga, the harpy, and beast folk likely have their origins in failed or sabotaged rituals intended to enhance the lineage of humans somehow. If you are writing a book for a magic system like this, 
there'd be endless narrative potential. You could have prophecies that predict individuals and events. There'd be powerful sorcerers sequestered away in obscure locations, creating bizarre structures to empower their next ritual. Mages would prepare, sometimes for decades, to perform their ritual on a certain day in a certain location, and there'd be a lot of potential for a hero to come along and sabotage their stuff. Given everything I've described, I'd really love it if you could comment below what your thoughts would be for the perfect conditions for necromancy and occult magic. Certain things go without saying. Winter, darkness, and night are all things that would empower necromancy. What about geometry and color though? Materials like metals, stone, plants, animals? All kinds of things could have an influence. Thanks for watching. This system still needs some thought, but I like it so far. I've got more videos on necromancy stuff coming soon.